Percentage composition is a very common thing that you will be asked in the quantitative aspects of chemical change or stoichiometry. You'll be asked this in grade 10, 11 and 12. You need to know how to do this. Sometimes the question isn't very obvious. Sometimes they don't say work out the percentage composition. They might say work out the percentage by mass. We will deal with a lot of questions like that in this video. Let's jump right in. Before we speak about percentage composition in terms of the quantitative aspects of chemical change, chemical reactions, or stoichiometry, I just want to explain in easy terms what does it mean if I ask you for the percentage composition of something. So if I give you a bag, okay, here's a bag, and I say 30 grams of the bag is rice, 40 grams is beans. So what I mean is the stuff filling up the bag. 30 grams of what is filling up the bag is rice, 40 grams of what is filling up the bag is beans. What is the percentage composition of the substances that is filling up the bag? How would you work that out? Well, you know that in total, the substances that are filling up the bag is going to be 30 plus 40 grams. So the total amount of substances filling up the bag is 70 grams. So if I want to work out what is the percentage of the bag that is filled with rice, how do I do that? Well, I know that rice, the amount of rice in the bag is 30 grams. The total mass of the bag is 70 grams and I times it by 100. In other words, at the bottom of your fraction is the total mass or the total amount, the total mass of the bag, total mass of the contents of the bag. And at the top is the mass of the substance that we care about. So because I'm working at the percentage of the bag that is rice, at the top I have the mass of rice or the mass of the specific substance. And why do I times it by 100? You times it by 100 because we're working out a percentage. So if you work that out, you get 42.86%. I rounded it off to two decimals with a percentage sign, that is the percentage of the bag that is rice. Obviously, to get the percentage of the bag that is beans, you could say 100% minus 42.86% to get the percentage that is beans. Or what you can do is the following. The top of the fraction, we put the mass of the beans, which is 40 grams. At the bottom, we put the total mass of the bag times 100, and we get 57,14%. When we work out the percentage composition, we are working out, in this case, percentage composition by mass. So the bottom of the fraction is always going to be the total mass. The top is the mass of the compound or the element or the substance that I care about. So when it comes to working out percentage composition or percentage by mass of a specific compound, so say for example, the first example that we do is H2O. If I want to work out the percentage composition of H2O, we know that there are two elements that make up H2O two elements that make up this compound. We have hydrogen, which is the H, and we have oxygen, which is the O, oxygen. So basically, we are going to be working out the percentage that is hydrogen, and we're going to be working out the percentage that is oxygen. What percentage of water is hydrogen? What percentage of water is oxygen? And to do that, we need two things. At the bottom of the fraction, it's always going to be the total mass of the compound. In other words, the total mass of water. And when I say total mass, we're going to be working with molar mass, which means we need to work with the atomic mass numbers, which comes from the periodic table. There we go. That's the denominator of the fraction. And the numerator of the fraction is the mass of the elements in that compound. So these would be our steps. Work out the total molar mass of the compound. As I said, we need to use the atomic mass numbers, we need to use the periodic table, and we're doing it for the total compound. Then step two is work out the mass of each element within the compound. So step one will give us my denominator, and step two will give me the top of the fractions, the numerators. We use the above formula, which is this formula, in order to work out 
the percentage composition. Oh, if the question says, give me the percentage composition of H2O of water, we do it as follows. Let's do step one, work out the total molar mass of the compound. When working at the molar mass of H2O, we need to look at our periodic table, hydrogen, there it is, the atomic mass number, atomic mass number of hydrogen is one. But remember, it's H2O. We have two hydrogens, so it is one times two. Plus, now we need to look for oxygen. Oxygen is over here. The atomic mass number for oxygen is 16. There's only one oxygen, so we say plus 16. Our total molar mass, therefore, is 18 grams per mole. Now remember, this is the total mass of water. This is the denominator of my fraction. Step two, work out the mass of each element within that compound. So essentially what I'm trying to do is I want to work out what percentage of water is hydrogen and what percentage of water is oxygen. There's only two elements in H2O. The denominator, remember, is the total mass, 18 18. We're going to times both fractions by 100 because it's percentage composition. Now, remember, this is step two. So, what is at the top of this fraction? The top of this fraction is the hydrogen within H2O. So, it's this part of my calculation. Hydrogen has a mass of one, but there's two of them in water, H2O. So, it's one times two. So basically, it's 2 over 18 times 100. And I'll work that out now. Then for oxygen, oxygen is 16. So it's 16 over 18 times 100. There's only one oxygen, so 16 times 1 essentially. So 16 over 18 times 100. And the answers are as follows. I have rounded both of them off to two decimal places. So what this means is that 11.11% of water consists of hydrogen. 88.89% of water consists of oxygen. Let's do another example, slightly more difficult because the chemical compound looks a little bit interesting. So it says, give the percentage composition of magnesium hydroxide. Now. Magnesium hydroxide, first thing that we need to consider is the fact that the question says, give the percentage composition. What that means is you need to consider what elements exist in this compound. We have magnesium, we have oxygen, and we have hydrogen. So, because the question wasn't specific, the question didn't say what percentage of the compound it consists of oxygen. No. They said give the percentage composition. So the breakdown of the compound. They want to know what percentage of the compound is magnesium. And what percentage is oxygen. And what is hydrogen. So a full breakdown telling me the percentage of each element in that compound. Okay, cool. So step one, work out the molar mass of the entire compound. So step one is we need to work out the molar mass of MgOH2. Let's look at our periodic table. So the first element that I care about is magnesium and the mass, atomic mass number for magnesium is 24. And if you look at my compound, there's only one magnesium. Okay, so just 24. Plus my next element, so we did magnesium, tick. My next element is oxygen. Now, very, very important. And some students don't understand this because there's brackets around the OH and there's a little two outside the bracket. Think about maths. It's like the distributive law. So you multiply the two into the bracket. So the two belongs to the oxygen and the two belongs to the hydrogen. What that means is that there are two oxygens, two oxygens and two hydrogens. So if we look at our periodic table, oxygen is 16, but there's two of them. So 16 times 2 plus hydrogen periodic table. Hydrogen is 1, but there's two of them. So 1 times 2. If I add these together, 24 plus 16 times 2 plus 1 times 2, you get the molar mass for this entire compound, which becomes the denominator of my fractions. I get 58 grams per mole. 
that is the denominator of my fractions. So when I'm working out the percentage of magnesium, 58 goes at the bottom. Okay, it's just times 100. When I'm working out the percentage of oxygen, 58 goes at the bottom. It's the total. When I'm working out the percentage of hydrogen, 58 goes at the bottom. I think you, you are all understanding what I mean by now. Then the top of the fraction is just the magnesium. So if you go back to what we just calculated over here, this 24 is just the magnesium. Okay. The oxygen is this, 16 times 2. It has to be 16 times 2. It can't just be 16 because, as we said, there's two oxygens in this compound. Hydrogen is 1 times 2 because there's two hydrogens in this compound. Then we can type that into our calculator and we get the following answer. There we go. There's my three percentages. And take note, if you add these three percentage, percentages together, it should give you 100. It might not give you 100 exactly because we rounded these off to two decimal places. My last question, which is a little bit more difficult. So for those of you that want a challenge, here it is. See if you can try it yourself. So pause the screen, see if you can do it. But this question says, calculate the mass of nitrogen in a 30 kilogram bag of ammonium nitrate, NH4, NO3. So this is my substance, okay? I have a 30 kilogram bag of NH4, NO3, ammonium nitrate. I want to know of this 30 kilograms, what is the mass of nitrogen in that bag? So is the nitrogen two kilograms? Is it three kilograms? Is it four kilograms? What a lot of people would do, which is wrong, is a lot of people would say, well, there's one, two nitrogens. So wouldn't it be two kilograms? Or some people would say, well, there's two nitrogens and the total bag is 30 kilograms. That doesn't make sense. Okay. You can't, there's two is the number of nitrogen atoms in this compound. 30 is kilograms of the bag. So what you're going to have to do first, if you haven't paused it yet, try and pause it, see if you can figure it out. What you first need to do in this question is you first need to figure out what percentage of this compound, what is the percentage of nitrogen in NH4, NO3? So does nitrogen make up 50% of the compound? Does nitrogen make up 25% of the compound? Does it make up 100%? Definitely not of the compound. Obviously, nitrogen cannot make up 100% of this compound because there's hydrogen, there's oxygen. But if we know the percentage of the compound that is nitrogen, we will then be able to work out the mass of nitrogen. I hope that makes sense. So let's pretend it's not, but let's pretend that we worked out that 50% of this compound is nitrogen. So 50% is nitrogen. That means that 50%, half of the compound is nitrogen. It means that half of this mass will be nitrogen, which means that nitrogen would be 15 kilograms. Does that make sense? I hope it does. So step one is to work out what is the percentage of nitrogen in this compound. And how do you do that? How do you work out the percentage of nitrogen in a compound, it is percentage by mass. So you do it just like we've been doing the other examples in the question. Step one is to work out the molar mass of the entire compound. So let's do that together. So the molar mass of NH4, NO3, what elements do we have in this compound? We have nitrogen. There's actually two nitrogens. We have hydrogen and oxygen. So there's two nitrogens, and what is the mass of each nitrogen? Here's nitrogen, 14. So it is 2 times 14, plus we have four hydrogens. And you should know now that hydrogen is 1 times 4. Remember there, hydrogen is 1, but there's four of them, so 1 times 4. And oxygen is 16 times 3. Just to show you, here's oxygen, 16 times 3. You work that out and you should get 80 grams per mole. So that is the total mass of the compound. Now, remember the question wants me to calculate the mass of nitrogen. So 
I want to work out what is the percentage of nitrogen. So the percentage of nitrogen is equal to, remember the top of the fraction will be the mass of nitrogen. The bottom is the total. So the bottom is the total that we just worked out. The top is the mass of nitrogen. Yeah, two times 14. Remember we said that there's not one. So my compound is NH4. In O3, there's not just one nitrogen, there's two nitrogens. So two of them, and the mass of nitrogen is 14. Divided by 80, because 80 is the total mass of the compound, times 100, and you should get 35%. Now remember in previous percentage composition questions, like this one that we did before, and like the one with water, we worked out the percentage of all the elements. We did magnesium and oxygen and hydrogen. In this one, I'm just doing nitrogen. I'm not doing the hydrogen. I'm not doing the oxygen. The reason why I'm not doing that is because they didn't say calculate the percentage composition of NH4, NO3. They didn't ask for all the elements. They want the mass of nitrogen. I only care about the percentage of nitrogen. So I just want to put into context what this means so far. It means that I have this bag. Okay, this 30 kilogram bag, let's forget about the mouse of the bag for now, I have a bag. And I'm telling you that 35% of that bag is nitrogen. 35% of that bag. So if I want to know the mass of nitrogen, I know 35% of the bag is nitrogen. So therefore the mass of nitrogen will be the 35% of the 30 kilograms. Okay. 35% of, an of sum is a multiplication sum, 35%, percent means we divide by 100, 35% of the 30 kilogram bag is nitrogen, that the nitrogen is 10,5 kilograms, sorry, kilograms of the bag. I really hope that makes sense. This is one of the more difficult ways that they can ask percentage composition. I hope that that's been helpful. If you'd like more examples like this of the qualitative, quantitative aspects of chemical change or stoichiometry, some of these examples come from my study guide, which you can purchase on my website. It contains 50 worked examples. It covers this topic from grade 10 through to grade 12. It is a difficult topic, so if you struggle, I would recommend this. It's 100 pages long. I hope to see you in another video very, very soon. Remember to watch the rest of this playlist for the rest of this topic. Bye, everyone.